All right, last stop. Uh, this is the last of uh, four countries that uh, I have on my itinerary for this trip. And, you know, we uh, officially concluded the Indonesia portion this morning uh, after one, you know, final night in Bali. I wanted to pick a place to come to that I hadn't yet uh, seen and that I only needed a couple days to uh, come visit and, you know, really ch check it out and also a place I could get back to Boston uh, from rather easily. So I decided to come to the island of Borneo and settle in for the next couple days in the Sultanate of Brunei. This is Brunei, one of the most unique and complex nations on earth. It's one of the world's wealthiest per capita and has one of the most beautiful ecosystems right at its fingertips. Now I do need to forewarn you, Brunei is not for everybody. It is not LGBT friendly, nor is it 420 friendly. And unfortunately we're talking potential death penalty. But don't let that scare you. Brunei is one of the safest countries on earth. Like people don't even lock their doors when they leave safe. And it's also one of the most religiously tolerant. And the people are some of the friendliest you'll ever meet. Well, to kind of put things in a nutshell, Brunei is like taking an Arab country on the Persian, uh, on the Arabian Peninsula, and then clicking and dragging it, and then dropping it in Southeast Asia, and then letting it auto uh, populate with a lot of Southeast Asian and Far Eastern cultures and values. That's basically what we have here. Now, this is the capital of Bandar Seri Begawan. And I'm gonna show you the main highlight or the main site here in Brunei. What this is, is this is uh, a very well-known mosque here. This is the uh, Masjid Omar al Saifuddin. And actually it's uh, kind of an awkward time to be uh, doing a, uh, a clip because actually Friday prayer uh, has actually just gotten out. So, of course, you know, this, like I said, this is probably one of the most well-known structures here in the country's capital. And it's also very well-known, that little structure, like a little dragon boat. It's not a real boat, by the way, it's just kind of like a replica of one uh, right over there. Unfortunately, it's under renovation, so we can't actually access it, but otherwise you'd be able to walk down that, uh, that walkway and kind of check it out there. And then, of course, in the distance, you see the, uh, I think you call those dragon blood trees. Uh, those are actually imported from uh, an island called Sakatra, which is actually owned by Yemen. Uh, which, you know, that's a, actually a pretty neat uh, thing to actually have brought in here. But to see the best of the nation's capital, one needs to get off of land and into water. All right, bear with me one second. Yes, all right, gonna, gonna uh, take you around here? Yes. All right, how much? Uh, $30. How much? $30 per hour. 30? Yeah, yeah. All right, never mind. Sir, sir, up to you. How much do you pay me? What's that? How much do you pay me? I have like 15 on me. Yes? I have like 15 on me. 15? Fi one five. One five, it's okay. All right. That's how you bargain. Okay. Where are you from? Hey. I'm uh, from America. I'm America. What's your name? Yes, Majlan, you. Majlan, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Okay, do you want the village here? Yeah, yeah, why, why don't we do that? Okay. All right, so what we're doing right here is we're checking out the, uh, the local uh, water village. Uh, supposedly this city actually has you know the biggest uh, you know, water village in the world and like these are people that actually you know live out here
Wait, so it's actually like schools and everything that are like out here? Wow, okay, I thought it was just like people's houses. Wow. Yeah. All right. So apparently, fifteen thousand people live in these uh, water villages, and uh, I don't even you know here. I mean, uh, they have like all the different facilities here in uh, in these water villages. Hopefully, you can hear me over the wind. Um, but it's like it's not just you know people living out here uh, in like little houses on stilts. It's actually you know people that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I kind of dropped the ball on that. It's actually, you know, like schools, police stations, you know, all the different facilities, um, you know, everything along those lines too. And you're seeing about 15,000 people that live here. So this is what it looks like right here. to all my uh, chicken breeding friends. If you don't want your chickens getting out, come live on the water. Got a nice moss over there. All right, see more livestock. And then of course it stretches. Uh, drop my phone the water that's the last thing I want to do all the way over there so this is like all around us you can see the water villages but wait there's more go just a little bit farther and you'll realize that you don't actually need to leave the city to get a taste of Borneo's wildlife from saltwater crocodiles to the internationally known proboscis monkey. At least until the other annoying tourists scare them away. tomorrow for the next update uh, where we actually go into the rainforest where there's you know rafting and flying foxes and proboscis monkeys and uh, you know I can't wait to show all of it to you so uh, thank you for watching